Good evening. This is Wallace Gator Bradley. And as you know, I'm the host of the Bradley Report. I'm also the president of United Peace Inc. We got a very interesting show today. So much has happened. Okay, and it continues to happen. I'm going to say by the grace of God's mercy and his continuing hedge of protection around me and others that he's using as a vessel. I want to say this, because it's very important that I say this, that this show wouldn't be possible without the production of it through me following the instructions of the producer and the director of this show, none other than my wife, Terry Marsh Bradley, who is the chairman of United Peace Inc. And without the in-studio direction, and I follow his instructions too, Brother Omari, this one be It's a very important show. about the continuing of the 90-day protest of the Don't Be My Food and the continuing of the protest. Both of them are protests that's peaceful protest, peaceful educational protest about enforcing the Nursing Home Care Act, and a very important court case that came down, and it's going to be my personal tribute to a mother of a friend of mine, Miss Loretta Brady. Her mother's name is Lottie Smith. I got a chance to meet her before she had died. So with that, I want to say, to God be the glory. Y'all know that's my story. Omar, let's go to work. If you pick up that gun and you fire that gun, anyone that get harmed from you firing that gun, that's an innocent bystander. We asking the community, ostracize them, push them out, don't let them hide anywhere, don't support them, and let law enforcement do their job. The code is this. If you pick up that gun to solve your problem, I'm not endorsing violence. I'm saying you're violating the code if you discharge that weapon. An innocent people is shot or killed, especially a child or an elderly person. And the community must uphold that code. He got a shoe shine. The reason that it worked in the 90s, because everyone was a part of it. Kids. Women, elderly, was off limits. You didn't touch them. Didn't touch them. By ostracizing from the community, pushing you out of the community, not supporting you in the community, or protecting you in the community, so that law enforcement can do their job by apprehending and the Cook County State Attorney can do her job by making sure that you get a fair prosecution. This is so that there is no retaliation in the community because you discharge or you fire that weapon that you're attending or attending the park. We all got to come together. Those of you, my name is Wallace Peter Bradley. I'm the Urban Translator. I'm the President of United Peace Inc. We all got to come together to let it be known that black lives matter everywhere. Regardless if the police shoot somebody that's black, 
it means twice as much to our community when someone black is shooting someone black. With at least eight children under the age of 10 shot in the city in just two weeks, some are asking if that code still carries any weight. There's something that we got to do. Gator catches up with some friends on Calumet. That one year old that got killed. His conversations of late have focused on kids getting shot. He says the rule still applies. We as men got to put it down and say that still exists and never left. We all got a responsibility. We all got a responsibility, man. But it never left. I'm going to call out to all the brothers. You know what we do. Put the word on the street that this is no longer tolerated. We at home work together and we know how it works. We've been able to help individuals turn themselves in of the community, kick them out, but law enforcement come to arrest them. Now is the time. Just like it was a video from Miss Frazier and let everybody know about the awakening of George Floyd. Somebody got a media, a video, or we need to use our video to stop this senseless violence. And I believe that vengeance belongs to the Lord. And with that, I want to say, to God be the glory, and that's my story. That's my theme for the opening of my show. And one of the things that's right is we as a people have to do everything that we can. Because we can't stop all the shootings because the shootings are spontaneous. But we can let it be known that if you fire that weapon, you're going to be held accountable. You, if your name gets to ring it, you owe it to yourself and the community to turn yourself in, get your lawyer, whatever you do, to show that, hey, that wasn't you. You got a right to a fair trial. But the community, and you got a right to their concern to help turn the tide on this senseless violence, shootings and killing of innocent people, especially women and children and men. Shootings on the Dan Ryan, shootings on Lakeshore Drive, shootings on uh, uh, 94. On the Eisenhower. The last two shootings where innocent babies got shot. They caught the man, allegedly, for firing a weapon where the young child got shot uh, by the Buckingham Fountain, I believe it is. With community support, they found the individual. They shot another child. So it's working. We got to get involved more and say, hey, this is the code. Law enforcement, mayor, state's attorney, governor, county board president, aldermen, state reps, state senators, Cook County commissioners, need to push this code so everybody knows there's no way for you to hide.
It's in the form. Some young guy came and told me it's almost like terrorist activity because we got to stay in the house. Carjackers get coming at us. We can't go to the store. Our parents can't go to the store. Heaven forbid, they got to almost have armed guard if they had to go to a currency chain to cash a check or pay a bill. We can do it. My condolences to everyone who have been killed, especially within the last week. My prayers for those who have been shot and wounded. Pray that God heal them. I'm praying for all the families that have, and their friends that have been infected or affected by the sense of shootings and killings. And I'm asking you, Father God, on their behalf and mine and my family's behalf, that you continue to bless us with your mercy and grace and keep a hedge of protection around us. And that you bring down your wrath. On those who won't stop with the shootings and killings. Because vision is yours. And with that, we got another issue. Y'all know I've been on this McDonald's piece. I was in Atlanta, Georgia. So I'm glad that I was in Atlanta, Georgia at the same time that the people in Georgia was putting pressure on the corporation behind the governor signing that law that was suppressing voters, especially people of color, exactly or personally African-American voters. And they were letting the corporation know, those corporations that were giving money to those elected officials, state rep and state senators, that approved of the bill and sent it to the governor, who happened to be a Republican that was elected and he signed the bill. They put the pressure on the corporations to make it well. They have to be against that systemic racism, the new Jim Crow, in suits. And the corporation heard the people of Georgia. And they heard us in Georgia talking about systemic racism within McDonald's. And they say, hey, we all got to go against systemic racism across the board in its totality. And the corporation heard us. And what happened? Coca-Cola, Delta, you name it, all the corporations came out and said they was against it, that bill being signed by that governor. And the Major League Baseball took the All-Star game out of Atlanta, out of Georgia. Made it where the state ended up losing a hundred million dollars that would have been in revenue for that state because the All Star Game was going to be in Georgia, in Atlanta, Georgia. This stupid racism is wrong. Suppressing vote by African Americans, Hispanics. Asians is wrong. I'm glad the corporation stood up. We even asked McDonald's to do the same thing that the other corporations did 
to let it be known that they are against the suppression of votes and systemic racism. I want you to hear this. Peace with is a promo from what we did in Georgia. United in Peace Inc. with the Don't Be Mac Food. Peaceful educational protest against systemic corporate, systemic racism against black people within McDonald's. Brother Martin. Yes, sir. Hit that for me. They said the investigation by the, by, by, by the House Financial Services Committee into this systematic racism, this financial engineer, let's see what they come out with. Because the numbers that we have, they came from McDonald's. Right. So we, then, then we don't trust McDonald's. So because look what they, look what trust in McDonald's got the Bird Brothers in for 32 years. Create some transparency. Let us see what's going on. You know, if you got fair, you know, diversity, equity, inclusion that you claim, and John Rogers say that, that the Bird Brothers should have seven and a half million dollars worth of equity in their business. Where is it? That's my question to John Rogers. Where they seven and a half million at? That's right. You know, that, what he's saying, is dealing with numbers that we've got from McDonald's. It was brought to my attention that the Illinois legislator, legislation, legis, legislators are back in Springfield. And one of the things that's on there, the African American Legislative Caucus agenda is getting rid of systemic racism. I want to say I applaud, I applaud, I applaud the speaker, the first African American speaker Illinois has had. And that's State Representative Chris Welch. I applaud the caucus leadership, African American caucus leadership within the Illinois House and the Illinois Senate for coming together. against systemic racism. I pray that the Latinx caucus and the progressive caucus come together in support against systemic racism. Be it in the corporate world, be it in the school, be it if someone's trying to take away their vote. I also ask publicly, I'm asking, on the show where I did the Zoom interview with the speaker, I was glad that he allowed me the 15 minutes because he was very, he was moving. I applaud his staff for making it happen along with my staff for making sure that I was in place so that it could happen. Speaker, Welch, I want to thank you for your time for allowing me to make mention about how you feel about systemic racism. And the one thing about McDonald's, I hope there's a committee that's formed to have McDonald's 
to come before either the House Committee, Illinois House Committee, or the Illinois Senate Committee that's going to be dealing with the eradication of systemic racism because McDonald's, global office, is here in Chicago, in the county of Cook, in the state of Illinois. And they are willfully engaging in corporate systemic racism against blacks, people, African Americans. Call them on the carpet. If the people in Georgia can call Coca-Cola and Delta and all the other corporations, including the Major League Baseball out, surely we can call McDonald's out. Publicly, I've asked the speaker if we will send a letter to McDonald's to find out what's really happening, or if we could be that bridge of reconciliation to get it where the McDonald's CEO uh, the president of their board along with the African American that's on that board and their lawyers to meet with James Bird and Duro Bird and Mr. Kahari Nash and their lawyers to sit down and work together, aid and assist one another in the eradication of corporate systemic racism that's within McDonald's based on verifiable factual documents. I want to say don't be Mac Food. Out in Chicago, Fairway 22nd, in front of their corporate office. Over there on about Randolph and Compton, it used to be Oprah's studio, Harpo. It's now the corporate office of McDonald's. Anybody get a franchise, have to come in and go to that area, to that place, the corporate office, to go to school to learn how to be a franchisee. And this systemic racism is where they are getting rid of African American franchisees. We're going to move on to the next piece of this show. It's a tribute to a great woman. I got to know her through her daughter, Miss Loretta Brady. Her mother's name is Lottie Smith. I want you to listen to this video. Brother Mari. There you go. Can you hit that for me, sir? Appreciate you. Paramedics don full safety gear before delivering Lottie Smith, a patient who is recovering from COVID-19, back to the Westchester Health and Rehab Center this afternoon. They're doing everything they can to protect themselves. It is too late, however, for Londa Claybon's mother. You only get one mother. Nobody could ever replace your mom. 
Claiborne's 83-year-old mother, Carrie, tested positive for COVID-19 10 days ago. They moved her from the Westchester facility to a hospital. On Monday, she died. One of at least two confirmed fatalities and 11 cases of the virus. Several of those cases are staffers at the facility, including Tara Lynn Baugh. We could have spread it around to each other. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's my major concern. Anybody that's going in and out of this facility should be tested. It's not safe. All regular visitors and employees enter and leave the center wearing masks. Hilda Alvarado is worried about her grandmother, Carmen Echenique, who is at the facility. It's very, um, you know, nerve wracking when it's hitting closer to home. A state health department spokesperson declines to confirm cases at the location to protect patient privacy. According to a statement from the center, we are doing everything in our power to protect our residents and staff. We recognize the especially vulnerable nature of those we serve and the staff who care for them. Londa Claibon, however, says the center failed to protect her mother. My mom would be here today had they not had them people to work, I believe. The spokesperson says the center is working to prevent exposure to other patients and staffers, but several staffers we've spoken with say they believe it may already be too late. You know, what's key about this is they try to get rid of Miss Lottie Smith. I, Andrew Holmes, and others. Including, including family members, were having protest after protest after protest for a year. We sent documented photos, complaint to the Illinois Department of Health Director. We made the governor aware of what was happening because the director is who he appointed. And then when they get all the information, they did nothing. Then the news stories start happening about everything, and then the different nursing homes start suing. And more and more and more stuff start happening. We started uh, please, Governor. Please enforce the Nursing Home Care Act, Section 8, against the nursing homes that aren't in compliance. Because you have the power, and there's a law there that we're asking you to enforce. Asking you to ask or order the Illinois Department of Public Health Director to enforce that law so that it would untie the hands of the 122 county state's attorneys, inclusive of the state's attorney within Cook County, where Westchester, South of Westchester Nursing Home, they are in the midst of selling the nursing home to another nursing home. They got suits against them as well. That's in Westchester, Cook County. And Representative Welch's district, who is now the speaker, in the North Speakers District. It's 
It may have saved some lives. That that you just saw was an employee that told them that she was infected with the disease. Yet they allowed her and told her to come back to work around the most vulnerable folk people. Seniors and other residents and other employees of Westchester. Individuals I got infected, employees, and residents. Some of them died. We started a uh, lead. Governor enforced the Nursing Home Care Act, Section 8. Save our seniors. Peaceful educational protest to inform the people of what's happening so that they could call their legislators, so their legislators can share with the governor. Well, what happened? They end up firing or making a subordinate who was the deputy director of the Illinois Department of Public Health to resign because they say she didn't deal with the complaint. But the fact of the matter is this. I'm of the opinion only way she could have dealt with it righteously was with the permission of her supervisor, which was the director of the public, of the Department of Public Health, Illinois Department of Public Health. The director of the Illinois Department of Health couldn't, couldn't do nothing, didn't do nothing, because the governor didn't instruct her to do what is right, in my opinion, when it comes to the health and the well-being of residents in these nursing homes and employees in these nursing homes in the state of Illinois, especially everybody's just as important, but especially African American. They're talking about now about the, the vaccine, trying to make sure that African Americans and people of color, Hispanics and Asians, you call it, are able to get the vaccine. And I'm glad that they're moving forward and make sure that that happens. But I got another clip that I want to show you. Brother Amari, could you bring this clip down? Yes, sir. Right there. Westchester Health and Rehabilitation Center has 46 reported COVID-19 cases and 12 deaths, according to the state, and also being sued over coronavirus death. They try to move her out that facility. But they couldn't. The West Suburban Nursing Home, where 12 residents have died of the coronavirus, plotted to kick out an elderly woman because her daughter, her daughter now, understand this, 
During this time, when they come with the coronavirus, a lot of family members couldn't even get in to see their family. But while they could, Miss Lottie Smith's daughter, let me read that for you again. A West Suburban nursing home where 12 residents have died of the coronavirus plotted to kick out an elderly woman because her daughter, that's Loretta, Loretta Bray, that's what I'm talking about, Loretta, criticized the troubled facility according to a lawsuit the daughter has filed it was in the Cook County Circuit Court. Then it ended up in the federal court. We're going to get to that. What I'm saying here is that the families, now that you can go into a nursing home, you want to find out what's happening. The things that they did to this woman, Lottie Smith, 82, was in the Westchester Health and Rehabilitation Center in Westchester in late March when she uh, appeared to be suffering from COVID-19 symptoms, according to the suit her daughter, Loretta Brady, filed against the nursing home. The administrator should have been more attentive to the resident, according to Ms. Brady, who said her mother was diagnosed with the coronavirus, ultimately recovered and remains in the same facility. Our complaints fell on deaf ears. On March 25th, Myth was sent to Laola. A lawyer, by the way you want to pronounce it, University Medical Center in Maywood with a high fever and difficulty breathing, according to the suit. She returned to the nursing home, but again was hospitalized April 25th after falling and having seizures, the lawsuit said. And she fell four more times. Inmate. What's so perplexing about this is that Loyola Hospital should have been reporting this to Illinois. Department of Public Health. That's too many falls. We're going to get into that. Omari, I got two pictures up there I want to show before you show the, the next article. Yeah, it, I, I sent two pictures. I emailed them to you. The last email. No, no, come down. It, it, it's, a, it's the uh, email after that. The last one right there. Oh, you didn't get them. Okay, you probably didn't get them. Well, anyway. She died. And uh, I had a picture that I want to put up there and show the tribute that I had for her in honor of her. Uh, her homecoming celebration. Lottie Mae Smith. She was born April 21st, 1937. That was her sunrise. Her sunset was December 6th. 2020. Well, bring down the next story, Omari.
Yes, sir. That story right there. It says a suit against COVID white nursing home can continue despite Pritzker's immunity order. You know, the nursing home, especially South of Westchester, was getting away. You can say he was getting away with murder. Had the governor enforced the Nursing Home Care Act way back in March when he started getting the complaint of 2020. Even in August of 2020, when the Illinois Department of Public Health got rid of the assistant director of the Illinois Department of Public Health because she didn't address the complaint. And they did nothing then. And still they haven't done anything. They haven't enforced that law. So the suit ended up in federal court. And the decision came down on the 9th of April. Westchester Health and Rehabilitation is being sued by the families of two women who infected while being there. One was among his resident, his 12 residents who died last year. I'm going to read some of this to you. It pains me. It pains me so much. Westchester Health and Rehabilitation is being sued by the, Ill by the families of two women who were infected while living there. One was among 12 of the residents who died there last year. A lawsuit against a West Suburban nursing home where 12 people died last year from coronavirus can go forward despite Governor J.B. Prisca's executive order last year granting privately owned nursing homes broad protection against being sued over COVID-19 illness, a federal judge has ruled. Westchester Health and Rehabilitation Center, which had 46 reported coronavirus cases last year, is being sued by families of Rita Sanders and Lottie Smith, who contacted the virus while living there in March 2020. Sanders, 64, was hospitalized March 23, 2020, and died about a week later. Smith, 83, entered the hospital a day earlier and recovered. She says she suffered falls that the nursing home allowed to happen because she, co she complained about conditions in the facility. According to the lawsuit, Westchester knowingly exposed residents to employees who had tested positive for the coronavirus. The suit says nurses with symptoms of illness were ordered, were ordered to keep working and the facility failed to provide them with personal protective equipment. That's what they be talking about, that PPE. That means personal protective equipment. Westchester wanted a, fed, they wanted a federal judge to dismiss the lawsuits because the governor's March 9th, 2020 coronavirus disaster proclamation gave nursing homes immunity over negligence and didn't create liability for willful and wanted misconduct. That pains me that a governor would put an executive order out there and not enforce 
the Nursing Home Care Act, Section 8, which is an Illinois law. Under his watch, it is the law. In order to check the nursing homes that aren't in compliance, to make sure that the residents within those nursing homes and the employees of the nursing homes will be safe and be protected. Why would he push an executive order like that and don't enforce the Nursing Home Care Act, Section 8? That's what the people are asking me, who I'm accountable to, because I pushed for them to elect J.B. Prisca to be governor because I felt he was a better governor. He would become a better governor than Ronna. And I know he's a human being like all of us. Everybody make mistakes. But he got to right them wrong. He got to own up. to his mistakes. He got to enforce that Nursing Home Care Act, Section 8, against the nursing homes that aren't in compliance, so that those 122 counties, I believe, that's in the state of Illinois, their duly elected state's attorneys can do their jobs and investigate those nursing homes for violating that law, and also it will make it where the Attorney General can do his job. They can't do their job because the governor refused to enforce the Nursing Home Care Act, Section 8. I am not anti-J.B. Prescott, but I am beholden to those who are asked to elect him. This is constructive criticism. He hearing me, he know it, it didn't have to get to a court. But now that it's there, headline reads suit against COVID whack nursing home The suit against COVID whack nursing home can continue despite Prisca's immunity order. Because that immunity order gave Westchester what they thought was a cover. Where they didn't have to own up to their responsibility for the employees in Westchester, the residents, and especially the senior citizens in Westchester, and they felt that they was immune from a liability because of a bogus executive order and because he did not ask or order the, his appointed director over the Illinois Department of Health to immediately implement the Nursing Home Care Act, Section 8, against the nursing homes that weren't in compliance. That ain't me saying it. I'm just repeating what I know from what I've read which are verifiable, factual documents. And when I read this order, this memorandum, and the opinion of Judge Manish S. Shaw, S-H-A-H, 
that was filed April 9th. The memorandum order that the judge attached to his opinion broke it down specifically based on court orders, based on the law, based on the documented facts. That's why he didn't dismiss the suits. Because of the verifiable documented facts. This is my tribute to Miss Lottie Smith, who I met because of the atrocities that were happening in Westchester, Solver Westchester Nursing Home and Rehabilitation Center that someone else has just brought. And another thing, those individuals that was working in there, that's jumping off the ship, sinking ship as if they were rats, they should not be allowed to work in any nursing home. In the state of Illinois, they should be barred. The same way with the regulation that you have for bad lawyers, you bar them from practicing when they do something that's bogus. On the same way, when a police has done something wrong allegedly, you put him on death's duty, you stop him. But what you do to a bogus employees of these nursing homes, because you're not enforcing Nursing Home Care Act, Section 8, you allow them to go from nursing home to nursing home to nursing home to nursing home with the same attitude, the same action that they did to the nursing home where they was fired from or told to leave. It's just like when they send bad priests that allegedly have been found guilty of abusing individuals. They send them somewhere and then they let them come back and they go to another church. Same thing they do, and they go to another church. But that's being stopped. They do the same thing with these bad employees. The thing about it is Westchester wanted a federal judge to dismiss the lawsuit because the governor's March 9th, 2020 coronavirus disaster proclamation gave nursing homes immunity over negligence and didn't create liability for willful and wanton misconduct. But U.S. District Judge Manish Shaw said the lawsuit will continue, quoting, a 7th U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals ruling that found that an immunity defense usually depends on facts of the case. You hear me? An immunity defense usually depends on the facts of the case. What that mean? What that mean, Gator? But well, let me tell you before I read it to you. As an urban translator, to me, it means that 
the facts in the case has to be where there is no fact in the case in order for them to dismiss the case. If Ms. Sanders didn't die from coronavirus, case should be dismissed. If she wasn't infected with the disease, case should be dismissed. If Lottie Smith wasn't infected with the disease, then case should be dismissed. If Lottie Smith then fall down all those times, then case should be dismissed. If Lottie Smith wasn't infected because of what was happening, because of the willful and wanton misconduct, and the facts don't pan that out, then the case should be dismissed. That's what that means. There are outstanding, this is what the judge said. You heard what Gator said, but this is what the judge is saying. Why he refused to dismiss the case. There are outstanding factual issues to resolve. That means Ms. Sanders And Miss Smith had factual issues that needed to be resolved. That means fact exists. Verifiable documented facts exist. For example, the executive order protects health care facilities from liability for a death or injury that occurred while the facility was engaged in the course of rendering assistance to the state by providing health care services in response to COVID-19 outbreak. Shaw noted that the lawsuit says Westchester failed to protect residents from infected nursing homes. Staff members. Hear that? For example, this, I'm going to read it again. For example, the executive order protects health care facilities from liabilities for death or injuries that occurred while the facility was engaged in the course of rendering assistance to the state by providing health care services in response to the COVID outbreak. They didn't do it. The judge noted that the lawsuit says Westchester failed to protect residents from infected nursing staff members. There's a difference between allowing the virus to spread by taking no preventive measures and spreading the virus while affirmatively treating it or trying to prevent the spread, he wrote, adding that the family suing the nursing home have plausibly alleged that Westchester engaged in willful misconduct. One star out of a possible five that that low-rated nursing home in Cook County has fared the worst for corona death. Westchester received one star out of five. Five is the highest. They got one. On May 6, 2020, less than two months after Sanders died, Cook County Commissioner Brandon Johnson held a news conference outside the nursing home to draw attention to his problem. Afterward, a Westchester spokeswoman said workers' health was being evaluated after each shift, visits were being restricted, and personal protective equipment was being provided. Another company has taken over operating Westchester and declined to comment Monday. I want to say this because it's time for me to wrap up. 
I want to put this on your heart. I want you to call the governor's office. I want you to call your state rep. I want you to call your state senator. I want you to tell them to enforce that Nursing Home Care Act, Section 8, and tribute to all the people that I got infected by COVID at the nursing home and all the ones who have died and honor them and ask your state rep or state senator to write a bill and name it Lottie Smith bill to protect the residents and the workers in nursing homes from infective disease. I want to say, to God be the glory, this is my story, and I thank you for allowing me to engage in something that I hold very personal, and that is public health of me and my family and of your family and you. And with that, I want to say to God be the glory. That's my story. Hey, make sure you wash your hands. Get your shot. Wear your mask. Don't put your hands in your face. And be about that distance. To God be the glory. That's my story. Thank you.